Hello there, right here we got the first 1.18 pre-release and these come after snapshots where they're kind of winding down for this 1.18 version. And they put these out so people can test stuff and if there's any problems they'll go ahead and fix it. So there's going to be less features and more just fixes from now until the full release. And they sometimes release these several times a week. We got some big changes to look at today so make sure you guys are sub as well as have that bell turned on. One of the first things that they did is some improvements on upgrading old worlds to new worlds. So let's go ahead and update this world. So I updated my 1.17 world to 1.18 and the borders are over there. If I get too close, it actually crashes, which is kind of a bug in this current snapshot. Here you can see the old caves up above. Obviously, they haven't been touched at all. So we still got the lava lakes at the right level. And then underneath of them, they come in with the new caves. So you can see that the new caves aren't like breaking into the old ones and all the bedrock that was here because this is Y level zero the bedrock got converted into deep slate and that's why you see these kind of flat surfaces this was all bedrock and then underneath is all the new caves now it is possible to tell where the new chunks and old chunks mix because at Y level zero where I'm currently looking there is a layer that was bedrock so not solid blocks so there's no caves that intersect it but if you look on this side over here you can see these are the new chunks where caves go right on through and if we pull up our chunks, we can see this is the actual chunk border here. This is all old on this side, and this is new. You can see it does some things like cuts this amethyst right on the edge there. But in other places, you can see the cave actually transitions into the new area very easily. So I only really noticed this difference between the top caves and the old chunks and their new caves underneath, as well as the top old caves and the new cave that are outside of that area. Here's a funny case where we have an old chunk that has lava pool. And then right along the edge in the new chunk, they come out with some water. So water tries to mix and turns a little chunk of it into obsidian. Now, if we look at the border on top, you can't really see the difference between the old and the new. New's on that side over there, and this is old over here. The transitioning blend is much better than before, as well as the surface blending. So the surface heights transition downwards smoothly into different terrains. A lot point out to me in the last snapshot that if you have a world that doesn't have bedrock, when you update it to 1.18, the game will make sure not to place any blocks below it in the old chunks. So here we have my old 1.17 testing world and I have a big area that is full of no blocks whatsoever, including bedrock. And I have another area that doesn't have bedrock and one that doesn't have the bottom layer of bedrock and some other cases over there. Let's go ahead and update this world and see exactly where the game chooses to place in the new caves underneath as well as new blocks. So now my world is updated to 1.18 and you can see that the bedrock got converted in the old chunks and you can see that the new deep slate as well as new caves and blocks are all placed underneath. But in this area where I removed all the blocks, it kept it just like it was above and didn't place any blocks underneath of it. Same thing for over here where I just removed the bedrock, it also did not put in any blocks down below. As well as over here, just removing the very bottom layer of bedrock also prevented any blocks from being placed underneath of it. And this is not chunk related as over here I have just a chunk on its own where I have a few blocks missing of the bedrock and wherever I broke bedrock it didn't place in block where the rest of it it did. It also seemed to put in vines as well as lichen along the side of these walls. The lava that was flowing down into this void area before now just gets frozen right there and we also got some frozen lava pools down here. This is actually really nice because if you just come in and break the very bottom layer of bedrock, you can prevent the game from automatically putting in all these blocks down here. And because they kept it so that mobs do spawn faster the lower they are, not all your old mob farms that are at this Y level won't be as efficient, so you have to move them down to the new lowest part of the world. So if you go ahead and break the bedrock now, you won't have to remove all this extra block. Alternatively, you could just let your world update and then all these blocks will be placed in. Then you can remove all these and you won't actually have to do any bedrock breaking. You can just leave the bedrock down there and you can just place your farm just above the bedrock. Although perimeters aren't needed to get decent rates for most farms, it is kind of fun to clear big areas to make your farms look pretty. I still feel like there should be an option for people that don't want to have the new caves placed underneath in their old chunks. So maybe they could offer a toggle. Otherwise, we're going to have to use a third party program. What do you guys think about this change? And is there anything you want me to test with it? They also came in and added in large biomes as well as amplified worlds for the Java edition. But they did remove the caves option as well as the floating islands one. This is a singles biome world that is a nether. You can see that it is different than the old caves biomes, which was the nether generation kind of applied to the overworld. I wish they would give us more options on how we can tweak our own world generation. Because in the past, there used to be a lot more options. And in case you're wondering what the end dimension looks like in single world, this is what it looks like now. Instead of having the cool floating islands in the world.
the Mojang developers also fixed quite a few bugs this past week. Some of them are extremely old. Let's take a look at them and see how they changed the game. In the past, there was this weird bug where you could grab a stack of items in survival, pick it up, then use your middle click mouse button and hold it down and drag across and it would create all these fake item stacks. Once you lift up on it, they would all be removed. And this visual bug has me fixed after five years of being in the game. They fixed quite a few bugs with accidentally going through the world border. In the past, you could use a entity that's outside the world border, such as like a horse or a boat out there to actually get beyond the world border. And once through, you could actually come out here and end up dying and they also resolved it so you can't place lily pads out there or place or take liquids from outside the border as well as apply to these fixes to spawn protection and that's something you can turn off for servers so people don't grieve your spawn you used to also be able to interact with villagers outside world border and other entities like shearing sheep which they changed you're also able to place down beds at the world border and the other half of it would actually be on the other side you're able to hop in the bed and leave and actually end up on the other side of the world border the main reason why they fix these world border bugs is to do with people playing kind of like a miniature size version of the game kind of like a fun challenge to see if you can beat the entire game minecraft just by being in like one chunk this is done by making world borders that are different sizes so you can set the world border to like 20 blocks and then you can set it to different areas now it's gonna be centered around my location but there was bugs such as not being able to actually see the world border it's supposed to be around here and you can see i can't actually place blocks over here and the actual world border itself was offset. Now the world borders will be centered where you'd say they're going to be, and they'll also work properly in each of the three dimensions. So now survival maps that use these world borders should be able to play without so much trouble. There's also a problem that if you would take a nether portal over into the nether dimension, you could end up actually being outside of the world border, and this would cause you to die. And they also resolved it so you would no longer accidentally have your dragon egg be sent outside of the world border where you can't obtain it. We're here in our chunk testing world where we test out the new simulation distance and they actually fixed one of the bugs to do with this and that is if you would turn down your simulation distance, have your render distance turned up, you can actually throw projectiles into chunks that are not being entity processed. So if I throw a trident way out in the distance, it actually gets stuck in those chunks out there. So now instead entities will just end up hitting the border and just freezing there and they won't just constantly glitch. Now in the last snapshot I was concerned about there not being any redstone processing chunks around the player even though there was still ones around spawn chunks. But as you can see now this is working in the dialogue you can see the red text is showing that it is redstone processing or block processing way out there in that pink chunk. But during my testing stream, I noticed this was not working the same way when loading chunks through the nether, a cool trick that I discovered in the past. You can see there was no redstone processing chunks around the outside edge with my indicator in the chat. So one of my viewers, Sava, made a bug report for it. Now you can see it's fixed with nether portals. We also notice that if you turn down your sim distance, mobs will still try to spawn out there. And those mobs will count to the mob cap. So you're not really gaining the performance saving by lowering down the simulated chunks around the player as much as you would if that was turned off. But in the bug report that I made they actually said that they wanted it that way. In this snapshot they did fix it so that the block ticking is not always exactly at eight chunks. Now it will change depending on what type of simulation distance you choose. So I went ahead and turned my simulation distance all the way down and I let these crops grow right here and you can see that they clearly stopped growing right there and I got little markers that tell where that is so that is six chunks and let's go ahead and increase the sim chunk by one and see if crops at the far end grow. Yep, you can see they're growing out there. So it looks like the sim distance is the max limit in which crops will grow away from the player. Depending on where you're standing in the chunk will also determine how far out it goes. I know it can be a bit confusing, but I will do a full review over all of these changes with the full release once the changes are set in stone. The villagers that were appearing in these new cold biomes were actually changing their outfit to be the cold biome type. They also fixed this trick where you could go inside of a cauldron or a composter and then place a solid block on top of you. This would put you into crawling mode. And because the game automatically tries to call the faces of blocks that aren't being normally visible from the outside, this is done to reduce the amount of block faces that are rendered around the player, which initially helps them with frames. This also means that any block was on top of a cauldron, the game thought, oh, well, the player doesn't need to see what's inside of it. We'll just make it all see-through. And because of this, you could be inside one of these and actually have like x-ray and look around into nearby caves but it's also unintended because the player once inside should be able to see his surroundings and this trick is different than using like a trap door 
They also resolved a minor issue where fossils weren't generating in the far south or east corners of a chunk. They fixed a sound problem when strays and drowns were being converted. The actual sound of them converting is underneath of the friendly sound and now they have moved it over into the hostile sounds where it should be. There he converts. In the past, sometimes you would have a place on a mountain that would be raining, or sometimes you would have like snow occurring inside of a jungle. Now that this is fixed, it should make it easier to run farms like a powder snow farm. There was this weird occurrence where trees kind of started in one biome, would actually be shifted and be placed into a nearby biome. So they were ending up not spawning near the positive edges of biomes, but they were extending into the negative edges. But we shouldn't see this anymore. Searching for a desert pyramid in a super flat desert world no longer freezes your world. The weird ocean biomes that we've seen creeping onto land is fixed in this newest snapshot. Stalactites weren't actually falling when you would break the block above them. In some cases where there's a block underneath them, watch as these just break off as items rather than actually falling. In some places in caves, the water wouldn't automatically flow. The result is problem where acacia trees weren't putting on leaves in some cases when below Y level zero. Pillager outposts that were spawning on some of the new mountain biomes were having trouble actually spawning in pillagers because the ground was snow rather than grass. They once again fixed this problem where falling blocks would sometimes vanish right before they turn into a block, kind of causing this flickering effect. Deserts weren't generating with enough sandstone, where now they are. Upgrading old worlds were causing nearby leaves to change into surface builder blocks. There was still the problem that lava pools got you intersect into strongholds and destroy your entrance end portal. With that fix, hopefully this is the last with exit end portals being broken, preventing you from getting to the end dimension. As we've seen in the last snapshot, they didn't actually convert the, the areas underneath of old chunks into deep slate blocks but instead of stone. This problem was also occurring in new chunks underneath of Badlands. There's also a problem that the end dimension chunks were loading in very slowly, which they also fixed. Lava lakes on the surface weren't generating with stone around them. A similar problem were happening with lava pools where sand was just falling down and not being held up with, with sandstone. Cave carvers were not being applied to, to under Y0 in the old chunks. Having a potion effect from a beacon and having a turtle helmet placed onto your head was causing the ambient particle effects from the beacon to be wrong. They also fixed two problems to do with advancements, one to do about where they're located within the files, another one to do about consistency of name. They also fixed JFR links on servers and removed some unused lava lake decorating configs. Leave a like before checking out this playlist where I show weird tricks I discovered during my testing or this playlist about 1 to 18 Minecraft news. And thanks to everyone who joined my discord as we pass 6,000 members over there. Next goal is 7,000 where we get some new features. So come join it with the link below. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.